Hello, I'm David Grasso from Bold TV and welcome back to another Millennial Minute. Today we're talking about the dominance of large businesses and how large and small businesses don't have an even playing field. You've already heard from our guests, Audrey Pruitt and Max Burns. So in some ways you agree guys, but you uh, disagree on the methods. So let's start with you, uh, Audrey. Why do you think that Democrats won't solve this problem? Democrats won't solve the problem because they're a part of the problem. Democrats are a part of the problem. If you look, for example, is where Amazon has struck most of these big deals, they have been in Democrat states. New York, they struck a deal. Virginia, they struck a deal. DC, they've struck a deal. Where Democrats have reigned is where big business has reigned. Financial industry, Democrat. Hollywood, Democrat. Name me a big industry that is not Democrat central. Social media, Democrats. Yeah, so, but Max, you say Republicans haven't been very helpful on this front either. Well, absolutely. And if you look at major mega corporations that uh, affect the public conversation in this country, the defense industry, mega agriculture and industrialized farming, uh, these are places that have advanced in large part by decimating small businesses. Uh, you can't operate a farm as a small family anymore. You have to be a multinational corporation. And that was made possible by the erasure of regulations, the erasure on antitrust prosecution against these massive companies. And it's just not fair to say that this is something that a small business can bootstrap on their own against Archer Daniels Midland or Walmart. It's not realistic and it never has been. So Autry, you guys basically agree on this. So how do we empower small business entrepreneurship in this country and grow our middle class again? What are your thoughts? Well, before I, before I say that, let me say my friend is absolutely incorrect. Thomas Massey, the Republican from Kentucky, tried to advance a bill in the House to deal with the small farmer problem. And both Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell together decided they did not want that kind of bill to go forward. So this is a problem that both the Republicans and Democrats, the establishment elite have. In terms of the way forward, like I said, it's very, very simple. One, it takes a constitutional amendment. You're gonna have to bar individual states. And this is something my friend and I also disagree about, right? This is not a federal problem. This is a state problem because states or localities are entering into agreement with these corporations, not the federal government. It's a state and local issue. So it's good to solve it at the federal level, it's gonna to have to take a constitutional amendment, which in a sense rolls back the freedom of speech and the freedom to assemble amongst munis municipalities and corporations. That's the only real way to solve the problem. More regulation won't do it. In fact, that's just gonna raise prices on consumers. Yeah, so what Autry's mentioning, Max, is something I think concerns all people. When Amazon was looking for another headquarters, they kind of played this little race to the bottom, like, oh, Lexington, Kentucky, like, what are you going to give me to move there and whatnot? You know, like, this is corporate socialism. So how do we fix this? How do we empower entrepreneurs, small business, and level out the playing field? The way we can do that is by actually having federal tax enforcement through the IRS closing loopholes so that mega corporations pay their taxes. And that money can be used to fully fund stimulus programs for small businesses in states. Uh, these are places where these companies are reaping record profits under COVID while states go bankrupt because they aren't receiving a dime in taxes from Amazon or Walmart or any of these mega corporations. Uh, if we want to expand uh, the pool of entrepreneurs, we need to make resources available to them. And we don't do that when the biggest taxpayers in the country are skipping out on their bill. Yeah, Autry, I imagine you're not happy that these social media platforms that are deplatforming conservatives also don't pay taxes. Give me your thoughts on that. This is the problem with my friend Max. Regulation, 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 regulation. If we had a real true free market system, then you wouldn't need it because the companies would not be able to do what they're doing. But we don't have that kind of system. So the problem is if you add regulation in one area, a loophole develops in another area. So that's, that's more regulation and more federal bureaucratic government outreach is, is not the solution. Again, even with federal taxes, this is a state level problem. Why is it a state level problem? 
Because if you're a corporation and you pay X amount of state taxes, you still deduct it from your federal taxes. And that system is not going to change. That is a bedrock common law business principle going all the way back to the 1500s. You can read Charles Adams' book, for example, The Tax of Good and Evil. Talks about a whole history of this back to Mesopotamia. The real solution, like I said, is a constitutional amendment that prevents discrimination within jurisdiction. That's the real solution. And as far as regulation goes and corporations paying taxes, you could have a flat tax, but the Democrats didn't want that. Right? The Democrats want more regulation so they, with inside the regulatory scheme, can pay off their friends. That's why they want it. By the way, Mitch McConnell is probably just as big as a Democrat as Max is. Okay, well, Max, we're out of time, but obviously I'm going to need to give you some time to respond to that incendiary language there. <laughs> this is plainly a battle of political will. Uh, it, it is a challenge, I think, for deep pocketed companies. Uh, that have influence over senators and congressmen, for those congressmen and senators to say, hey, pay your taxes, like I do, like Autry does. Uh, this is an enforcement question and you don't bend to rule breakers by making the rules more lax. You do it by using the tools you have and enforcing new tools where necessary to ensure that everyone is playing by the same set of tax rules. That's simple and it's something we could do right now if we chose to. You know what? I like you two together, so we're going to bring you back. But on that note, we're out of time. So Autry and Max, thank you so much. And thank you all for watching. Be sure to follow us on every social media platform out there at Bold TV. I'm David Grosso, and I'll see you next time.